What's going on everybody? Today we are going to be talking about the difference between destructive and non-destructive sampling on the MPC. Now you might be most familiar with the destructive method, but today I'm going to try to convince you to use non-destructive sampling going forward. And there's a couple reasons for that which we are about to get into. Play this record as frequently as possible. So let's start by loading up a sample. Let's try not to get uh, copyrighted. All right, semantics is safe. Let's use this one today. So we're gonna go about this and chop this just as if we were normally going to convert this into a drum rack, but we're actually not going to do that final step and use the shift uh, convert once we've chopped it up. So you see now that we're in chop mode, we'll just go ahead and hit regions. And if we hit shift here, there's that convert. We do not wanna do that. That's what non-destructive sample editing is all about. We're actually just going to be using this as the actual sample that will play back. So now we have these chops. All right, so our project's ready to go. I think our tempo is gonna be around 70, but now what we're gonna to wanna to do is create a new track that's gonna be a drum track, and now here's where the magic comes. We're gonna to go to the track edit mode, and if we come here to samples, we're going to be able to select that specific sample, but more further than that, we're going to be able to select a slice in the sample. So you see here we have action, or sorry, we have access. Yeah, it is, it's some action. We have access to all the slices here that we've already chopped up, and this is non-destructive editing. So here we have this pad now playing the first sample. And I already know the pattern that I want to use, so I'm not even gonna waste my time with these three pads. I'm just gonna go straight to this. Um, this would be the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth slice. So if I just come here, select my sample, and then go slice six. And actually I wanted that here, but I'm an idiot. I just put it where it should be. So that's fine. We'll just continue that. Seven, and now we want slice eight. Cool. So now if we go back to the main mode, there's a problem. And so if you can't hear it, uh, these pads are overlapping. They're not actually cutting themselves off. And that's a problem with the slicer here. So we just need to go back to global. We're gonna go ahead and turn this to uh, mono. And so now these pads will cut each other off. Perfect. So now let's go to main and I guess. Yeah, let's try to record that. All right, so that sounds pretty cool. Now the beauty of this is that we can keep on um, just building out this specific kit, or we can select different slices to interchange. This really makes the workflow a little bit better. It makes your samples a little bit organized and we're not duplicating files. So really there is a, a lot of benefits to this workflow. I just find it a little bit cleaner. You know, we're not duplicating all those files, but let's go ahead and finish this out with some drums. I'm gonna do the exact same thing just on a new drum track and we'll try to add something here. So there's my new track. Now let's go dig up a sample. All right, let's try this one out. So let's just go ahead and go into sample edit. Here we've got the scratch beat. 
Uh, we already were in chop mode. Let's see. Maybe regions. All right, so back in the track edit view, I went ahead and chopped up some of these pieces. Got a kick drum, little hi-hat, snare, and then a tambourine from just a completely different sample, and then a little percussion. And I just pitched this up and down. So you see I made like a, I don't know, it's like a little melodic instrument just by using that semitone adjustment for each of the pads. So I just duplicated them and then made that. So let's go ahead and see if we can put down some drums. I'm thinking like, uh, or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be kind of glitchy or whatnot. Let's see what we can do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. Be right back. Cool, so I'm gonna continue building this track out, but as you can see, this is kind of my non-destruct workflow. I think it's much better, I think it's much cleaner, and again, just to show you what it looks like when you're not using that uh, non-destruct workflow, actually, we need to go to the sample edit mode, and from here, we would just hold, uh, let's go to when we've chopped up, that we got some actual, yeah, I guess we do have chops for. But let's go back to the thresholds, and if we hold shift here, and we hit convert, Boom, we could choose to turn this into a new drum track, a new sample, lots of different options. Mostly we're creating a new drum track and it just creates new samples and assigns them specifically just like we did. What we're doing is a little bit better in my opinion because it's not destructive. Anyway, try this out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Peace.